Welcome. Today, we're going to talk about how to create a flow that is triggered when a record is deleted and why you're going to want to create these flows. My name is Brian Hayes. I'm a consultant with Rotiv, and this is Automation of the Week. Now, we've already got videos and tutorials that are showing you how to do a lot of cool stuff in flow when a record is updated. For example, we've got a flow that shows you how to create a roll-up summary when you don't have a master detail record. We also have a flow that shows you how to create a HTML table based on a related list. Those tutorials are really useful, but we can take it a step further and we can make it even more valuable within your org. And that's by triggering the same automation, but by a different event. So in those examples, we have triggers like record updates. When you create a new product line item associated with an opportunity, or when you create a new asset on an account, that can trigger the flow to create that HTML list. Or in our case here, when you add a new child location to an account, that's gonna trigger our roll-up summary to count those child accounts and update the parent with the number of child accounts. That's all well and good, but what happens when you start deleting data, not just adding data? Well, we need to have another trigger. You can't trigger in one flow on a creation of the record and the deletion of a record at the same time. We need two separate flows to do that. And this might seem a little counterintuitive, but one of the best ways of lightening your workload is by actually creating additional flows. So instead of having one automation that has that's a record triggered flow, say triggers on the creation of our child account and then counts all the other child accounts, Instead, we can break that into two flows, one that is the trigger when that account is created, and then a subflow that's going to run and actually do the logic of counting up those child accounts. The reason why this is going to save you time is because we can then create additional triggers like we're going to do today to run that same logic, but when a record is deleted. Let's get into the details. So what I've got here is an account record and I have a custom field for number of locations. I have a subflow that is going to run on the ID of an apparent account and count all of its child accounts to update itself with that number. So let me give you an example here. If we look at our hierarchy, we've got Jake's Wood Shop is the parent. We've got Blouse Barn, Burlington Textiles, and yet another location underneath it. If we go into Jake's Wood Shop and look at the details, here's our custom field number of locations is three. Great. Now let's take a look at our subflow. This subflow is what's called an auto launch flow. When you first create your automation, it gives you that option. Should this be record triggered? Should this be a screen flow? Or should it be auto launched? Because it's auto launched, we're able to launch it in other flows, which makes it reusable. And that's where we're going to save time. So we've got another tutorial where we actually build this out. What I want to do today is trigger this logic, but from the deletion of a record. To review this logic real quick, what we have is a variable that's available for input called account ID. We pass an account ID into this flow. We then have a get step, which is going to get all of the child records. So give me all of the accounts whose parent is equal to the account ID that we pass into the flow. So if that was Jake's wood shop, we take this ID it's going to then return these three records, Blouse Barn, Burlington Textiles, yet another location. We then have an assignment step here, which entire purpose is just to count the number of records in our collection. And then we have an update step where we're updating that originating account with the number of child accounts variable, which we assigned in the previous step. Pretty straightforward. Now let's create a flow that's going to trigger on deletion and still run that same logic. Click new flow in the upper right hand corner, and this time choose record triggered flow. Hit create. We're going to choose, of course, the account object, and we're not going to choose when a record is created or updated. We want a record is deleted. And you can see here that we have these radio buttons. You can't have a trigger for created and deletion at the same time. You have to create those as two separate automations. And then for our entry criteria, all we want is for there to be a value in the parent ID. So if the parent ID is null, false, so if it's not empty, it's not null, you know, then we want this to run because we know that it has a parent and so we're gonna need to uh, do some counting in order to update that parent account. Now click done. Next step here is to hit the plus button and let's add a subflow. From our list of subflows, we can find our subflow for count child accounts and that's what I'm gonna call it. Account child accounts. 
And from here, we can pass a value into that account ID from our subflow, which is available for input. Go ahead and toggle that on. And now we can choose what account ID, what value we wanna pass into that. So just like other record triggered flows, we have our global variable here with all of the fields from the record that triggered our automation. And that's how we can get that parent account value. There's our parent ID. That's the ID of the account. That's the parent. And then click done. So if we click save, let's give this a name, count child account on deletion, hit save, and then let's debug this. Let's say we were going to delete Blouse Barn. That's one of the locations underneath Jake's woodshop. If we select that, and it's going to run in rollback mode, so it's not going to update any of our records, and then click run, you'll see that all of those elements from our subflow actually show up in our debug here, which is great. It makes it a lot easier to see what's going on when that subflow executes. And if we go to our step here where we update the record, you can see that the value it's giving us is still three. Now, this is wrong because we're deleting a record. So it shouldn't be three child locations anymore. It should just be two. The reason why we're getting this result though is because all of this automation, all this logic runs before the record is actually deleted. This is an important detail for when you're creating record triggered flows on deletion. The deletion part doesn't happen until that flow is complete. So while you're creating logic, you still have that record in your database. So in this case, our subflow is getting all child accounts, all accounts whose parent is our current parent, which means our not yet deleted record is still in that get. So it's still gonna show up and be counted, even though it's about to be deleted. That means we need to adjust our logic a little bit in order to make this work. We have to make sure that our get step here is not including the record that's about to be deleted. To do that, what we can do is create a new variable, have that available for input, and then we can include that in our get step here. So let's take a look at our subflow. When we go to get child accounts, we want to get all child accounts whose parent ID equals account ID. But let's go one step further and we'll say, as long as their account ID does not equal, and we'll add a variable here for deleted account. Let's make that variable text. And we definitely want that available for input. You know, it can be null for now because sometimes this is going to run and we don't have a deleted account. We want this logic to work when we're creating an account as well as when we're deleting one. But because we've made this available for input, we can pass the ID from that account that's about to be deleted into it and then it'll exclude it from this get and we should get the right number. Click done, click save, click activate on this and we can go back to our flow and debug this again. Now, before we debug this again, click Edit Flow. Make sure this is saved. You'll have to hit Refresh. And when we go back to our subflow, there's a new variable here that's available for input. We just need to toggle this on, and we need to tell it what value we want to send over to our subflow. So in this case, we want to send the ID of that account that's being deleted. We've got that again in our global variable. Click Done. Click Save again and we can debug it one more time. Let's say we're gonna delete the blouse barn, go ahead and click run. And now when we come over to this step where we're gonna update the account, you can see the number of locations is two. That's because our get record two steps prior is excluding this account ID that we're about to delete. So that's the thing I really want you to take away. When you're creating a record triggered flow that's based on deletion, the deletion of that record does not happen until the flow completes. Just keep that in mind. You're probably gonna have to adjust your subflow a bit to make sure you're excluding that record that's about to be deleted. But once you've done that, you now have an automation that's going to keep your values and your records up to date when you're creating new records, updating new records, and when you're deleting them. I hope you found this tutorial valuable. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.